Welcome back to the next episode. Now before we jump into this episode, I'd like to give a massive thank you to all our subscribers, everyone who supports us, comments, likes, it means the absolute world to us, so thank you very much to everyone who does that. Now this video is a bit different from our usual uploads. We jumped out with Water Start in Bermuda to meet JP Skinner and Izzy to talk about how are they actually helping to protect Bermuda seagrasses. They're running a project at the moment trying to protect the seagrass beds because this year the seagrass beds have seemed to disappear or disappearing and there's real concerns about what's happening with them and also our turtle population has significantly increased in Bermuda which has also sadly seen a number of turtles starting to starve or struggle to find food as well so hopefully something can be done to help protect the turtles and also protect the seagrass beds to ensure a safe and stable ecosystem in Bermuda now let's go in and go see them and speak to them and see what's going on. Now I have the pleasure to be joined by JP Skinner of Water Start. Thank you for joining us today Thank you JP. Mark, this is great, appreciate so, it. So just to let everyone know, would you like to give a bit of background about yourself? Uh, basically a beach bum by nature. Um, I'm a teacher, a local Bermudian teacher who uh, I've just always loved the outdoors and especially just getting in the water. I think it's just uh, kind of salt water in my veins. And uh, love teaching as well. My, both my parents were teachers. It was something I've always wanted to do. But I think my, my four years in the classroom, I was always looking wistfully out the window wishing I was out here. Yes, and, I understand uh, how that feels. <laughs> so, uh, so this is, uh, you know, in a selfish way, this is me creating my perfect job to be able to teach but outdoors in, in the environment I love. Uh, we were in the water, I was on Tuesday, and we were looking at the sea cages and the yeah. turtles and having spoke with people at the aquarium. Yeah. Um, like Robbie Smith, uh, he was actually telling me that yeah. they're trying to find the seagrass yeah, beds. Right. So I guess that's, that's a right. huge problem that Bermuda's actually facing. Yeah, it really is. It's, um, you know, just it's, it's, We've been aware of this for a while. This season seems to be when things are, are really collapsing in some ways. We've seen a lot of looking very, very sluggish, unhappy turtles, and I've seen some dead turtles as well. And uh, and we're um, through a, a permit with the Department of Environment and Natural Resources. We're trying to help by deploying turtle exclusion cages and trying to regrow some of the, the seagrass. Um, and it's sad to say, but. The, uh, it's working in that seagrass is growing within the cages, but there are turtles circling very unhappily, wishing they could get into the salad bar. And it's it's uh, it's kind of sad to see that they're they're probably starving. Um, and and again, while it's you know a sad thing, when students see this and they think, wow, this is a problem, and I can actually be part of the solution. And they are so engaged, and they're you know they, and we tend to discredit teenagers as you know you can't contribute but boy did they come up with really good ideas and they're thinking this through and it's it's good education and hopefully Brilliant. through it will will come a, a solution to some of the environmental and issues at the end they're the next generation who's going to be the leaders That's right to lead this as well yeah. so we've got here is one of the interns at uh, what start is he she's actually leading the turtle program here or supporting it yes. taking the lead initiative yes. it yeah. so she's going to talk to us about the cage and we'll clip that clip just now so hi, I'm Izzy. I've been at Water Start since I was about 12 and I'm 19 now. So about seven years. Um, I started when I was 12 doing my beginner and I've worked my way up to now doing my dive master. So that's pretty cool. Um, and obviously I love the program because I've come back and interned. This is my third year interning and it's a great program. And I honestly love it. It's like a dream job. And so what I've been doing is the Turtle Cage Project, the Seagrass Restoration Project. And basically what we've been doing is we've been deploying these cages around Burt Island and what it basically does is it keeps the turtles away from the seagrass and allows the seagrass to grow back but there's still holes and everything in the cages so it allows sunlight and like little critters and stuff to still go into the cages and um, all that kind of stuff but it keeps the turtles out which is the main goal. Yeah so we're doing this basically because um, the turtle population has increased so much and it's really too big right now and they're eating all the seagrass and what that's doing is they keep like turtles graze so they'll keep grazing on the seagrass and if they eat all of it eventually the seagrass beds won't grow back and if that happens we won't have any in Bermuda which is a big problem because it's really important for the health of the ocean and it's also home to a lot of other like crustaceans and other animals and fish and everything so we obviously don't want that to happen so our goal is basically to protect the seagrass and allow it to grow back enough and then eventually we're hoping to put these cages around other parts of the island and allow the seagrass to grow back like all over the island Perfect. that's the main goal and how what are the kids doing to help so they're helping deploy the cages so we like we link noodles under and all through the cages and we swim them out 
and we put them down um, in different sites around Burt Island. And then they also have been collecting data using quadrants and like a data sheet. So they go in buddy pairs or groups of three and they'll throw the quadrants over the turtle cages and they'll kind of just look and see like what percentage is seagrass and what percent, like how much is there. And over time we've seen that increase where the turtle cages are and we compare it to a controlled area, which is just a marked out area without a cage on it. So we compare it to that and the group surveys that area as well. And they also just see what like animals are living in there and all that kind of stuff. And how, um, what sort of animals are living in the seagrass? Uh, like? We're seeing like fish, sea cucumbers, um, like French grunts, like just little fish, like that kind of animal stuff. And I heard there's a resident turtle here. Yeah, there is a little turtle. He likes to swim around the dock. We called him Newbert. Um, I think he wants to get the seagrass. You can definitely see it because he's always above the seagrass cages. And like, it's kind of funny because around the edges are definitely shorter than like the middle of the cage because he kind of sticks his head in a little bit. Like he can get it in a little bit, but obviously not all the way in. So he kind of trims the outside of the cage a little bit. Perfect. So Newbert is definitely like eyeing the cage. AZ was talking about the cage there. Yeah. And she's talking about putting noodles or woggles, yes. floats yeah. in. Yeah. yeah, yeah. So how, what was the reasoning behind that? And what's <laughs> trying to achieve with that? Um, so the, the cages aren't very heavy, um, but it's, uh, it, our students are learning to scuba dive. And a big part of that is your buoyancy. And, and obviously for a lot of them, I, we, we pretend that we're not teaching them physics, but we are. Yeah. And uh, you know, Boyle's law and all of this, and, and you know, displacement of water and pressure and density relationships and so on. Um, but we can sneak this in when they're not looking. So we give them a challenge and we say, okay, we've got these wire mesh cages. How much water do they displace? And in your estimation, how many noodles will it take to float them? Yeah. And, and they're already thinking, you know, well, well what size noodle? And, uh, you know, they're going to be big noodles or small noodles. And, you know, okay, well, I need this much weight when I'm trying to sink when I'm scuba diving and the cage weighs this much. So it's, it's fun just to sit back and watch the mental um, gymnastics think, going yes. on. <laughs> and then, of course, we thread the noodles and throw them in and see the minimum number of noodles to, to float them. And um, and then, you know, it's it's great because they, they will... So we've used the noodles to they've used the noodles to create the buoyancy. Yeah. And yeah. then how do they take them around to actually deploy them so and place them? We've, uh, you know, we have to obviously safety is concerned with everything. But the first few days we we check out that their swimming ability and their snorkeling ability is good. Yes. Um, and then uh, just in little teams and buddy pairs, they'll they'll just kick them around the corner, uh, remove the noodles and, and jimmy them in place. The uh, the cages will just sit down in the. The children have placed the cage into the water and jiggled, yes. it, into, d jiggled it into position. Yes. Now when it's in position, what are they really doing from that point on? Well, the, um, what we've been doing is every week with the students they'll go out and they'll, they'll collect a little scientific data. Yep. Um, so we have at the moment six cages deployed and a control site where there's the same area of a cage but no no restriction for turtles to come in and graze. Um, they take a quadrat and throw it ten times, estimate the, the coverage of seagrass yeah. and can work out kind of the, the, the biomass of seagrass growing within the cages. Um, it's you know, I, I say to them, science isn't always that exciting, but it's actually quite neat that it, the ones we deployed last year are already thriving and full of seagrass. Yeah. Um, the ones we put in three weeks ago, you can see little bits of grass coming off coming already, off and Perfect. the control is like a mowed lawn, nothing Just there, nothing, there nothing at, at all. all. Um, you can still see, and the good news is you can see tiny little bits of grass starting to come up, so the root system is still in place, which, is, good. which is a good sign. But um, but you know, just two days ago, we we moved one of the cages that we had to reposition, um, and within a day, the turtles had cleaned out everything that was growing there. So it's um, it's yeah, it's a uh, it's a concern. Isn't it's a it? concern because yeah. of course seagrass. Anyone doesn't know seagrass actually contributes actually a lot to the oxygen. Everyone thinks trees produce a lot of oxygen to yeah. the world, but it's actually the ocean and the seagrass beds as well play a huge factor in actually providing oxygen into the yeah. earth for us to breathe. They do. It? It's, it's a big. It's a, um, a big means of sequestering carbon, taking yes. carbon uptake, um, and producing oxygen. And for us as well in Bermuda, it's the nursery for all of our little fish. fish. The whole exactly. reef platform would have been huge nursery and today it's just it's just not there the nursery is missing and one of the data points we're collecting this year as well the students will go down and just get an idea of how many fish and which different species are within the cages yes. and the difference is amazing with the ones that already have a healthy crop of seagrass it's teeming with little blue striped grunts and french grunts and tom tates and everything already um, so it really makes you feel 
like it's an urgent need that we really need to get out there and do this as much as possible. But thank you very much, JP, for having thank us you, out Mark. and taking this the time great. to speak to us. Appreciate it. And yeah, for anyone you. who wants to find anything more about Watch Start, uh, I'll tag their website into this uh, article and also put their Instagram page just here as well. So you can have a look through, see the amazing work they're doing, and also the smiles on the kids' faces because they have an amazing time. <laughs> I've been out here a few times now. I was out here last year, and I can say from my own personal experience, they run an absolute, you run an absolute oh, fantastic cheers. program. Thank you. Thank you. And anyone that should is looking to get the kids in diving definitely should look at Water Start. But thank you very thank much. Thank you, Mark. Jay. This is great. Appreciate it. No, thank you. <laughs>